Okay, are we ready? I don't want to block the view of the house. All right, are we rolling now? Good morning. It's Sunday, October 18th, the second day of uh, Sheldorf Tribute Weekend here in San Diego. And we're standing in Ocean Beach, California, in front of the apartment where Shell lived for several dozen years here in San Diego as he began his activities starting and running the San Diego Comic Convention, which is now known as Comic-Con International. Okay, so we were talking again. It's Sunday morning in San Diego. It's about 10.15. We're here with the esteemed George Clayton Johnson, noted author, screenwriter, in front of Sheldorf's home. And we're here on the occasion that we're visiting Shell in the hospital, who's doing stable at this point. Yeah, you can hold that up and you put that in the screen. He's got the ID card from the... Anyway, we're here at Sheldorf's home, where he lived for many years and maintained his collection and entertained numerous visitors to San Diego during the convention time. Comments from George well, Clayton Johnson. We considered, I know, no, I consider this a real tragedy because Sheldorf's importance to the San Diego, San Diego Comic Con as the founder and, and uh, president of the organization, he's built it uh, from the meager beginnings with a bunch of fan friends like Clayton Moore here, and uh, now here he is lying in a hospital. We've come down to try and establish a, a memorial of some kind to commemorate Sheldorf's existence as a human being because he was a very, very dear friend to all of us. And he also was a mentor to many aspiring artists and writers, particularly artists and film fans, as he got involved in different groups beyond his service with the San Diego Comic-Con as its founder and president for many years up through the 1980s. And again, from this apartment where we're standing today, early on Sunday morning, is where he directed many of those activities and entertained, again, many different visitors who came to town to visit San Diego. And he lived here many years. I remember he told me one time, uh, when we were having lunch in this area, that he had an opportunity to work for Walt Disney Productions. Uh, he was involved with the Dick Tracy movie, and he had good success with that and he had a job offer to go to work for Disney and he pondered that because it was a goal of his to get more involved perhaps in wider entertainment but he'd have to give up this place where he moved to from Detroit and the ocean is about a quarter mile just behind us to the west and you know he has the fresh air from the ocean even though I don't think he body surfed <laughs> he was still around the atmosphere of this neighborhood Ocean Beach which is a kind of a more friendly, local-oriented atmosphere here in metropolitan San Diego. And again, this is intended for the website, so we're trying to think about everybody beyond where we are. And this apartment has changed much the same, for the very little changes over the years. And he told me that he living here, uh, he had an arrangement with his landlord that was stable, you know, for all like thirty some years, and he didn't want to give that up. And I know that my sister living in Sacramento faced a similar situation. If you move out, then you're if you move back in, it's a whole new negotiation with yeah. your rent. <clears throat> and so, in the 90s, he made that choice to stay here, where he was comfortable. And that impressed me because, you know, it showed me that he valued being where he was and he had good feelings about where he was, or he wouldn't have chosen to stay. Yeah. And uh, I have a friend who works in the Disney Studio environment, and I understand that some of the executives, when they become hired on at Disney, until they get settled, there is a neighborhood in the perimeter of the studio where they can stay in these very nice, you know, homes that are maintained for that purpose. And it may take months for them to find a place to settle. And so while they're settling, they're not in a hotel, they're in a home. And I'm sure Shell had all those, you know, opportunities. I wonder what he would have brought to Disney had he actually gone there and tried to involve himself in that animation business because he knew all the big name cartoonists. Uh, Milton Kniff, he lettered uh, Steve, uh, Steve Canyon. Canyon for him. And uh, Kniff goes back to my generation with Terry and the Pirates. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, I was very, very impressed with Shell. I thought of him as a, uh, as a San Diegan. He had come out from Detroit. But the minute he came here, he became very San Diego. You can hear the jet. The airport is just east of us. And the flight pattern takes us over the ocean. And he, he lived under these jets every day for 30 years. Uh, and they fly out of here till about 9 or 10 at night. And that's just, again, just part of the atmosphere out here. The jets fly over, you know, there's no escaping that. 
Most, most recently, the San Diego Comic Con had 125,000 visitors during its week-long uh, uh, stay here in, in San Diego. In July of 2009. It, it, it started out with 500 to 1,000 people coming to the earlier conventions. It moved from one place to another, but it spent most of its formative years at the Hotel San Diego. And that place... The El in, Cortez. The El oh, yeah, the, excuse me, the El Cortez. That place engendered a fantastic amount of uh, solidarity amongst comic book fans from all over the country. And I okay, and with us now is William Clausen, artist and longtime friend of Sheldorf as well, and a rock singer also underneath the shades. We're here again, Ocean Beach, and we're last night, we all got together here in San Diego. We visited the El Cortez Hotel, which George was just speaking about, where we held our earliest series of conventions through the early 1970s till about 1977 I think then we moved to the con community concourse convention center mm -hmm. which was part of in the center of downtown the biggest thing in town at that time and we were in the US Grand Hotel on the West Gate and executive of those neighborhood hotels close to the community concourse and from there it went on to the newly built convention center along the that would be the south side of the harbor over there around past Seaport Village growing 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 and all through that time, Shell lived here, which is why we're here today. Mm -hmm. And our director was asking us about our last visit to this place, and we'll start, we'll start with George. When was your... I, I didn't come to this place. I met Shell, and I took him to uh, Palm Springs, where we got an opportunity to go to Milton Kniff's house and to meet his secretary, Willie, and spend a weekend swimming in Milton Kniff's pool. And that was one of the big memories for me with Shell Dorf was being taken into his, his environment where he did his work at, to be a letterer on the Steve Canyon show. Yes, and he was also a collector. Shell was an avid collector. And inside the house on the other side of that wall, I remember seeing an original drawing by Bob Clampett, Beanie and Cecil, you know, thanking Shell. Because Shell used to request from the artist directly the artwork that would go in the program books. He'd send him postcards and request a contribution, and they would always send him something, original art. And often it would say, thank you, Shell, in the early program books.